I don't feel comfortable talking about money. I always feel like people think I'm not genuine when I do this. And yet, this is so important. Why are we making all these efforts to become good Web3 developers? We enjoy what we do, but it also has to make money for ourselves and also for the people we love. So in this video, I will give you a realistic plan to make $1 million in a few years as a Web3 developer. This is pretty much what I did myself to make my first million as a Web3 developer. This is not a get rich quick scheme. It requires some hard work and some time, but it works. Okay, so a bit more about myself and how I made seven figure in Web3. So I'm Julian, I'm a Web3 dev and I've been in this space for a while. And before Web3, I used to be a Web2 developer. At that time, I didn't have a lot of experience and professionally, it was really hard. I was freelancing and I always had these bullshit customers who were very demanding and also very stingy. Sounds familiar? Unfortunately, most of us have to start there. And worst, a lot of us end up stuck there forever. Fortunately for me, I got into Web3. That was the beginning of a crazy adventure and a few years later, I was able to make seven figures. If you had told me at the beginning, I would not have believed you. I'm not a math genius. I'm just an average dev and yet I made it. It's really possible. So where do we start? The most difficult part is to get your first job. A lot of people get into Web3 development dreaming of a six figure job, but when you don't have a lot of experience, it can be really challenging. I'm lucky because I live abroad in Taiwan and when you live abroad, you meet different people. This is how I discover freelancing Freelancing is great for beginners because it's way easier to get started. In general, freelance customers are not as demanding as employers. So instead of hitting your head against the wall and trying to get a job directly, try to start with a small freelance gig just to get your foot in the door and acquire a professional experience that you can put on your resume. And this is how I got started. I went to a couple of in-person events about Web3. I talked to a few people there and I met someone who was looking to hire a Web3 dev and I got the job. It wasn't a big job. I just made $5,000 with this first gig. But this is how I got my foot in the door. I was the only developer working on this project and I did pretty much everything. I did the front end, the smart contract and the deployment. And you can learn these skills in just a few months. I'm talking of getting a basic level. Of course, it takes longer to become really good. But for small customers, a basic level is enough. In general, small customers don't have a big budget and they can only afford one developer to build everything. It sounds intimidating, but in reality, it's not that difficult. We're talking of simple apps. Small customers are interested in breadth of skill, not depth of skill. So you just need to know a little bit of everything. Okay, so that was for step one, getting my first pet gig. Small projects are great to get started, but long-term small project sucks because you constantly have to find the next project, which makes you super stressed because you never know how long you will have to rely on the money that you just made. And in the end, it's really hard to save money and build wealth that way. So I already went through this struggle when I was a Web2 developer. So when I started my career in Web3, I didn't want to repeat the same mistake. So I realized that I needed to become way more selective when it came to which project I accepted. So I had to learn how to say no. And it's really hard when you don't make a lot of money, you feel like you can't afford to refuse anything but you need to break out of this mindset because otherwise you are stuck forever in this loop. So you need to have some criteria for what you accept. Let's say you just completed a $5,000 project. For the next project, you should target $10,000. So you have to move up. Um, and the other mindset change that really helped me is when I started to care more about my personal brand, uh, my marketing, uh, I remember I met that guy who was working at Mozilla. Uh, he was doing some super complex stuff uh, on a new web browser in Rust, uh, a brilliant engineer. And one day he gave me this career advice. He said, you know, Julian, when you are good, people notice it. Just focus on your tech skills and you will find a job. Makes sense, right? But is it true? 
Tech game developers, they are among the best developers out there. They have to solve hard problems like computer graphics. So in comparison, Web2 or Web3 development is way easier. So you would think that game developers make way more money than us, right? Well, actually, absolutely not. So game developers are among the worst paid developers on the planet and that's because of the market. So this is a niche where there are a lot of applicants because these people are super passionate about game development and they are willing to work for nothing. My point is that you cannot rely on your technical skills alone to be well paid. You also need to pick the right market like Web3 where salaries are higher and also to work on your personal brand so you can sell yourself to employers. And look, I know that when you're a developer, you tend to despise marketing. All you care about is coding, the technical stuff, I get it. But unfortunately, if you really want to be successful, you have to bite the bullet. And it turns out it's not that bad because everybody can work on their personal branding. Uh, I even created a mental framework for it. I call it uh, Blip, trademark in the blocks. You build something, a new Web3 app, a new smart contract. You learn something by building the project. You iterate until you have built it and learned enough. And finally, you publish something about what you just learned or what you just built. So it can be a tweet thread, a blog article, a LinkedIn article. It doesn't need to be revolutionary and it doesn't matter if your English is so-so. You just need to do it. The goal is to build your credibility and after you repeat the process, you do another blip. And when you do this over and over again, some people will start to follow you and you will have your own audience. So it doesn't even need to be a big audience, but what matters is that other people will start to see you as a technical expert. And from there, it gets way easier to have new job opportunities until one day you find your first six-figure job. I remember I got my six-figure job only a few months after I started in Web3. I was so freaking happy, but I can't promise you that it's gonna be as fast for you. Realistically, if you work hard, it can happen anywhere between six months to one year, which is pretty good. But now, what do you do once you get your six-figure job? So you can go buy some shitcoin, go party, go have some fun, but not too much. Because you think you made it, right? You think you're rich? Not really. Make some computation. Figure out how much you can save with a six-figure job in a few years. And I did a simulation. So year one, you are a beginner. So let's assume you make 60K and in the next three years, you finally find your six figure job and every year you get a 10% increase. So not bad, right? But after taxes, after living expenses and assuming you reinvest the rest in the stock market, you would have saved $140,000 in four years. So this number might be a little bit different depending on your personal situation, but you get a reference point. So is 140,000 good? And to answer this question, you can think of how much progress you are making towards becoming financially independent. And by financially independent, I mean when you have enough money to live off the interest. So there's something called the 4% rule. It says that if you invest a certain capital in the S&P 500, you can withdraw 4% every year and you will still be able to preserve the capital forever. Or in other words, you have free money for life. For most people to live comfortably from the interest, you will need a capital between one to three million dollars. Now, going back to our example where you target a six-figure job in Web3, after four years, you only save 140,000. So I'm not saying that you should be able to retire after only four years of work, but if Web3 is really a life-changing opportunity, after a few years of working in the industry, you should make a good progress towards financial independence. And I don't think that a six-figure job is enough. You need more. So instead of targeting a six-figure job, you should target to make a seven-figure. And I'm not talking of a seven-figure job here, but I'm talking of making seven figures over several years. So I made another simulation, assuming you start in year one at 60,000 as a beginner, and after you work your way up, but this time you don't stop at six figures, you keep pushing your income higher and higher until you reach half a mil year four, and 
in the end, you would have saved $500,000. So now we're talking. Still not enough to be financially independent, but this is a really good step forward. So now I know what you're thinking. You're like, dude, are you crazy? I'm really struggling to get a six figure job. How the hell I'm gonna make seven figure? I get that, but here is how you should think about it. Bill Gates said, most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. So when you say, I want a six figure job in three months, this is less realistic than saying, I wanna make seven figures in three or four years. And I understood this early in my Web3 career. After one year at my six figure job, I got let off, but I committed to make seven figures in the next few years. But to make that kind of money, I needed to have a very rare skill that was in high demand. So I was already specialized in Web3, but I noticed that the skill that was the most rare was solidity. So I became really good at solidity. And I also started to apply the method that I told you before. I call this blip. Build, learn, iterate, publish. So you build a project, you learn from it, you iterate, and when you learn enough, you publish something. So in my case, I focus on YouTube videos, but you can also use LinkedIn articles, blog posts, or Twitter threads, it's more simple. And thanks to the combination of my technical skills and the credibility that I got from my YouTube videos, I got more and more customers and employers that wanted to hire me. And I became really busy, so I started to increase my rates, I also started to be really selective about what kind of project I can accept. I was only doing Solidity, which is where I have the highest value to offer. So everything that is lowest value, front-end, CSS, HTML, React, I didn't do it. And this is how I started to make 10, 20, 30, even up to 40K a month as a Web3 developer. And I did all of this without sending a single CV. And I'm not even the strongest developer out there. Don't get me wrong, I'm pretty good. But there are a lot of stronger developers in Web3 who make way less money than me because they don't have a good strategy. So here are the main takeaways of this video. A six-figure job isn't enough. The better goal is to make seven figures. Over a time frame of several years, it's possible. Don't have too many expectations short term. However, long term, you should dream bigger. Your career is going to progress slowly at the beginning and faster after, it's exponential. So if you struggle at the beginning, it's completely normal. At the beginning, be a generalist to appeal to small customers. You will need to know a little bit of everything. That's how you get your foot in the door. From there, specialize in something that pays well, like Solidity. Build your personal brand thanks to the build, learn, iterate, publish method, because marketing is very important. Next, if you want to get a full roadmap of everything that you need to learn in order to become a professional Web3 developer, check out my free masterclass. The link is down below. That's it for this video. See you next time. Bye.